Good afternoon and welcome to my channel. Um, this will be the 40th story, believe it or not, in the sequence. Uh, and as ever, based on five random words, which are here. And this one is called Frog Bolognese. Or Frog Bolognese, whichever you, that's probably how you should pronounce it. Anyway. An extraordinary meeting of minds was anticipated in the University of Bologna in 2076 on the 300th anniversary of the discovery by Luigi Galvani of the effects of electricity on a pair of dissected frog's legs. The Tiara project had de developed a way of using quantum tunneling and miniature Einstein-Rosen bridges to throw communications devices into the past to garner new insight into historic events. As one of the key figures in the discovery of electromagnetism, Galvani was justly celebrated in Bologna, and this would be the fourth recipient of a tiara visitation. It was far too dangerous to send an actual human being through the wormhole, which persisted only for a fraction of a second. Instead, tiny nanobots, termed frogs, would be sent through a microscopic warp into the past and then retrieved later. These frogs brought back 5D audiovisual recordings of whatever they encountered. Tiara stood for Temporal Interaction Across Rarefied Asynchronicities, a somewhat cumbersome acronym that captured the complexity of the process. When Ludovico Palmetti retrieved the sensory data back from the frog, following its near instantaneous yet 300 year journey, he sourly guessed what he'd experience. His expectation would be far surpassed. The frog's voice had been modulated to an appropriate 18th century Bolognese idiom and accent. Frog 11A slash 004 Galvani, first encounter transcript. Phasing into reality. Sound first, then vision and other senses. Vibrant street sound from open windows. Oil lamp lit laboratory. Smell of burnt oil wicks, soot, a hint of chloroform and lavender. Sight of Galvani hunched over, wig slightly awry, breeches ripped up the back. Fingers inky, rubbing a pair of calipers across a piece of velvet, building up a static charge his wife affixing the frog with pins to the testing board and opening the notebook. She dips a quill into an ink pot and waits, poised. Frog. I am sorry to interrupt, but I have come to witness your work. Galvani whips round, looking for the source of the voice. Lucia instinctively grabs at her cruciform necklace. Galvani. Who's there? The laboratory's closed. Frog. I am an artificial construct sent from 2076 AD to witness and record. Galvani visibly blanches. Lucia looks at her husband scathingly. Lucia, someone is projecting their voice, Luigi. Perhaps with a hidden tube? Are any of your students practical jokers? Galvani, I don't think so. Frog, I am not a practical joker. I am an artificial mind encased in a microscopic device. I am 18.4 millimetres away from the tip of your quill, Madame Galvani. Lucia places a pair of pince-nez spectacles upon her nose and stares at the end of the quill, where a tiny moat of dust is floating. Galvani grabs a magnifying glass and stares at the floating metallic dot. Galvani, you say artificial? Is this puppetry? Frog. I am autonomous. I think independent of my operators. Lucia. Who are your operators? Are you a listening device? Frog. I am a listening and recording device. A free-thinking, remotely operated gyro particulate. Galvani and Lucia at this point have entirely abandoned their ongoing experiment and are both staring at the frog through their magnifying glass. Galvani to Lucia. We must get this under a microscope. Frog. You must continue your experiment. Galvani to Lucia. 
There is a tiny life inside there, a miniature intelligence. Lucia laughs at this point. She still seems to believe it is an elaborate prank. Lucia, you would have us believe we are talking to a superintelligent flea. Frog, I would not. I am not a living being. I am an artificial one. Galvani gazes through the lens held before his eye with fervent fascination. Palmetti thinks. Don't say any more, Frog. Lucia. Prove you are what you claim, right upon this paper. She holds up the notebook. Astonishing both of the Galvanis, the Frog evidently uses its nanocarbon drive to burn the following into the outstretched page. I am an artificial entity, an electrical being. Both Galvanis are astonished and terrified. They exchange a look, and Lucia, anticipating her husband's thoughts, starts looking for something under which to trap the frog, which has already anticipated this, and now weaves a chaotic trail around the laboratory, its visual viewpoint changing with alarming rapidity. Galvani, you bring the demolishment of everything we've worked for. Frog, how can this be? Galvani, how can I study the kicking action of a frog's legs under electrical stimuli? I have before me the proverbial angel from the head of a pin. You are the thing I must understand. Lucia snorts. She still believes this is sleight of hand. Lucia is the skeptic. Galvani, the willing believer. Frog, I am recording the historic moment. Please electrocute the frog. Lucia creeps closer with a bell jar while Galvani approaches the camera with a fly swatter. Frog, I have only one more minute. Please, I must record the experiment. The rest of the recording shows the two Galvanis racing after the frog as if it is an errant fly spoiling the purity of their laboratory. The final image is of the frog moving over the table surface towards the splayed body of its animal namesake while a glass bowl descends. Smell of perfume on Lucia's wrist, jingle of bracelets, phase out. Palmetti threw down the headset, frustrated. For the fourth time, the frog had merely distracted and irritated its subjects. Galileo, Newton and even Einstein had reacted the same way on the frog's three prior encounters. Whenever the frog spoke, all was lost. There could be no meaningful conversation when one speaker was by far the most fascinating thing in the room, not when scientists, artists or thinkers of any kind were involved. The Tiara project would have to be entirely remodelled. Its potential had been overstated. Still, it had been wonderful to spend a few minutes in Galvani's lab, even as an irritating interloper. Scientific journals would label Palmetti a modern-day man from Porluck. Habituated to the infamy, Palmetti would write up his notes and make the transcript available in the U-Cloud for all to see and share. There you have it. Another odd little sci-fi thing there. Um, inspired primarily by the concept of warp and frog and chaotic. Um, I just wanted to do something that linked cutting-edge modern science with the beginnings of the scientific method in the 18th century. Anyway, an experiment, you know, fittingly. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, possibly watch another video, um, share, tell people about it, and um, I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.